Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. I'm John Allen here with Jimmy Duke this morning, and uh, we got lots of stuff to babble about. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, you know, you know, it's this babbling water outside everywhere you look. The drains right. are sucking down water. And yeah. Boy, we had, a, we had a nice one come through here the other afternoon late, didn't we? Oh, it was a Thursday frog strangler. Afternoon. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was good. Oh, you could look across the street at the blacksmith and had to look twice to find it. I mean, it was coming down in sheets. Yeah, yeah it filled all your buckets up the other day. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> it, you, can it, water, it, you water the plants this weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, uh, we're we going to uh, talk about a bunch of stuff this morning, but as always, we'd like to talk to you. The lines are open. 423-8101, 1-800-304-1015. And we got a text line, and I never remember the number. What well, is that, we Jim? we got two. You can have your choice. Uh, 731-277-5155 or 731 731- 4107560 either one will get you where you need to be and if you like to watch you're curious about what goes on at this time of morning in a radio station hmm. y'all.com will put you right here in the seat next to us sure will yep yeah well so you know y'all take your pick but just whatever you do jump in here so otherwise we got to just sit here and look at one another and <laughs> that just makes us start <laughs> laughing <laughs> that, that's right we get we get a lot of that real quick uh, yeah, that's yeah. right you also uh, don't forget you can you can stream it if you're out there doing uh -huh. the streaming thing wnws.com uh, just look for the stream button or the live button and you can get it that way and carry it with you why do they call it streaming? I don't know. I call it that because that's what they told me to call it. <laughs> I, never, I don't know. Why, why do they call it streaming, John? John Raw. He don't know either. We're, we're just full of knowledge this morning. Folks, you need to call us quick. <laughs> we've just got more avenues of having nothing on. <laughs> this is true. I mean, they've switched everything from television. There's nothing on television anymore. That's for sure. And now you got to go to all these other things what that voodoo or hoodoo or hulu yeah, hulu, hulu. hoodoo hoodoo hoodoo, hoodoo the voodoo yeah yeah i mean that I, that's of course i'm i'm old i got a few years on me right yeah. but it really makes me upset sometimes when i'm watching the the news and they'll they'll read about that much of a story and then they'll say for more details go to our website i don't want to go to your website yeah just tell me get my it computer's over with. upstairs i don't want to go to it yeah and i'm too lazy to do it on my phone we need to have an old person channel that doesn't have Medicare commercials on it. It's no more J.J. Walker. <laughs> no, oh, more, get rid no, of more, no more football players trying to sell insurance. Mm. we got to get to business this morning. Let's you know, the, do. Let's yeah, do. I, I had to go to Kroger's day before yesterday. And guess what for? You'll never guess. I was out of paraffin, and it's this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> Paraffin? Paraffin. He said. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not canning either. I don't use it to can. I, now you really got it. I, I, I thought that was about all it was good for. No, no. There's more than that. I had to get me some paraffin, and then I had to find some thumbtacks because it was <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was was that time of the year that the third drawer down on the left side of the sink always sticks. Okay. Now yeah. we got it. Now so, we got it. you know, it. I can always tell when the humidity gets up, and that's kind of the first subject I wanted to get into because I ran into several situations like this this week where things are all swole up, mm -hmm. and it started with the third drawer down on the left side of the sink. Where you keep your it, skivvies? No, it's actually where the wash rags are. Oh, of all, oh that's important. I, I got that's the important. rags, the rolling pins, and the electric knife in that drawer that I don't ever get out till Thanksgiving or Christmas. You know? Yeah. But anyway, it's it's full of stuff. But for some reason, I don't know. That's the only drawer in my kitchen that will stick. Huh. You know, it it when you go to push it back in, it wants to kind of right. you know hang up. So I, and when that happens, because I open the drawer frequently, I have to look down and see why it's sticking. And then I, in this time, I found it. My left side thumbtack wore out. Do Don't it. you hate it when that happens? I hate it. And then when that happens, you can never find, only one you'll ever find is a right-handed one. That's right. You get them mixed up and you'll never get the drawer open. <laughs> but yeah, and, and we used to do this a lot when back before the white coats got involved and you had to have ball bearings and mm -hmm. rollers and wheels and nylon this and yep. it, it, before it got complicated. On the bottom of your drawer, right where the sides would slide over the the 
top rail of the drawer under it, right. you could put your two thumbtacks down, one on each side, to where the drawer guide, which is wood, not metal, Yep. Which would would slide on top of the thumbtack, correct? Keep from wearing a groove in the in the top of your style, and then you take a piece of paraffin. Now, if you you can't get paraffin, you can use bar soap, but you need to do dial because uh, uh, ivory is too soft and it won't stick to it like it hmm. needs to. But if you get your bar dial soap and rub it on that runner real good, right? It just glides over that thumbtack. Yeah. So uh, you have to do that from time to time when the humidity gets up in your house. So if you got that problem on one of your drawers, and it's an old-fashioned cabinet you maybe have that doesn't have all these metal rollers and drawer guides and all, and there's a lot of those still out there, especially on the older homes sure. around here, in the good old homes, as I'll say. And uh, they, it comes in real handy to make your drawers slide a lot smoother. That being in mind, went to two places this week where out of the blue, just for no reason at all, these people says, something's happening at the house. you got to get over here and see what's going on. Walked in the house, and they said, come on in here and see what's under my rug. And they had a beautiful hardwood floor, yeah. beautiful, and had a, one of them fancy uh, oriental, Persian, what, whatever species of rug it is, yeah. it, just throw rug on, on top of the hardwood. Yeah. And in the middle of it, it looked like a gopher done crawled up under oh, it. It no. was a big old hump in it. And you feel it in the hardwood, it puckered up something terrible. It, there. Yeah, that'll do it. And uh, they said, it's never done this before. What in the world's going on? I said, well, it's August, September. And uh, they looked at me kind of funny and they says, well, what's going on? Now, it was, you could hang meat in that house. I mean, it was <laughs> cold. And uh, I said, this will go away, but this is so severe, I don't know if it will go back down the way you have it. And uh, she says, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you've got central air and heat, and you got air ducts under your floor. And right now, and I looked in the vent to verify this, it looked like it was raining under the house. It was just dripping from the vents because she had it so cold in that bedroom. And uh, under the house was hot and humid. And obviously the, the duct work wasn't in that good a shape because it was dripping from uh, where it was all joined together. But that water was dripping out of the, or condensating and dripping out of that pipe and going down on the plastic and then it would evaporate and then condensate on the bottom of the floor joist and the bottom of the floor underlayment and that moisture would cause would wick up into that subfloor get to the hardwood and cause it to expand hmm. so it just kind of one of those things happen so what we got to do is take one of those boards up and kind of let everything relax and trim it down and slide it back in there not a not a fun thing to do, not necessarily a good thing to do. It's a good way to to uh, mess up a real good saw blade, but you got to do it. To, otherwise, it just keeps pinching the blade as it starts to relax. But eventually, you can get it down. Now, that's a good thing. The bad thing is to come January, February, when the humidity is way down, yeah. that floor is going to start drawing back up you're probably going to have a crack there but that's what she's got a rug for she can cover, cover the crack, the crack. As, long, right. as long as the crack's not big enough to trip over you'll be all right again. well that's true but it's it's uh when you have a really fine genuine three-quarter inch hardwood floor yeah uh you hate it when things like this happen because you start seeing the boards look like they're cupping uh, right. between each one because they're insert they're so tight it's not too bad when you have one of these uh, pre-finished floors and every board is beveled on the edge. You can kind of hide some of this stuff, and it it will uh, kind of be a little forgiving. But uh, in this particular case, this is the old-fashioned real hardwood that you put down when the, the floor is unfinished. And uh, by doing that, you have to you know sand it and seal it and do all that and everything's got to fit just right and fit tight so that's what happened so 
shortly after that, another day had the same situation. So, you know, if you've got a problem like that, uh, you might have a little floor bucking, you might want to check your humidity levels. You might want to check your duct work under the house, make sure you got good ventilation. Because another thing that'll happen is start getting a lot of mold growing under your house, and you don't want that happening either. No, you certainly certainly it, do not. Uh, it causes a problem. So hmm. anyway, that's uh. So the, the the new the manufactured floors that are as you said beveled on the edges are they locked together? Do they move around like that too, or just not as severely because of the way they're put down? Well, you know, back in the day when you put these floors down, you put them down manually with a. Uh, hardwood nailer and you'd hit it with a mallet and when you hit it you hit it hard and you cinched it up after it acclimated to the house the uh, newer ones you have now most of most people will use a pneumatic an air nailer and you can adjust uh, uh, the dial on that to adjust the pressure but being tongue and groove and the the edges not having to fit perfectly and they're stained all on the edges and pre-finished you can uh, create a little or you can give it a little relief in other yeah, words yeah, and not yeah. see it and, and not see the crack so you know that's one advantage of the new pre-finished floors over the way we used to do it but back when these original floors were put down most people didn't have air conditioning you kind of things kind of went gradually but now it could be uh, 110 degrees outside and you'll have it 65 degrees in the house true so and then we've got our houses built ever so tightly can't breathe and here you go it's yep. just a recipe for something to happen one thing right after another we are lucky and blessed to be uh, sponsored by three great sponsors quality outdoor products is one of those and uh with their with their metal buildings, I don't think we have uh, we don't have a problem with things bucking and and doing. No, they're, they're and, designed to do what they do. And if I had one of their roofs over my head this morning, I probably wouldn't have been able to get up just oh, for that. Man. It's that doing rain, that right now. That rain yeah. uh, hitting that metal roof is just kind of soothing. You know, makes the mm. week of misery kind of yep. just uh, melt away there. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, get. If 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 you need to get get in that mode one of these days, you know, get you get you a metal shed, get under it, and take a little music with you from Loving Spoonful, a song called "Rain on the Roof." It is the most soothing rain song you will ever hear. Hmm. Try it this afternoon when you got nothing else to do. Oh, I guess you got that on a forty-five. I can borrow it <laughs> or an album, either one. <laughs> Might have it on eight track, but I want you to go play. Oh uh, well, hey, I got one. <laughs> anyway, quality outdoor products. It's, it's a, a local business located out on uh, on uh, forty five bypass at uh, the Sovereign Nation of, of Three Way. There you go. And uh, they deal in in metal products, whether it's a standing seam roof for your house or a full building for whatever purpose you want to design one for. That's where you can get it. You can make a barn for your pony, even. Uh, that's right. That's right. All shapes and sizes. And put the doors and windows where you want them and just custom your own little building out there. Yep, absolutely. And if you are the kind who likes to do your own work, they even sell the proper tools to put the things together with. Mm -hmm. You can actually go out and design one of these things or buy one. I guess they have some stock things also that you could buy. If you just wanted a, uh, a 10 by 15 or a 10 by 20, uh, basic building they they could do that for you they'll 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 manufacture it they'll cut it they'll have it ready to go all you have to do is go by and pick it up and take it home and uh, and spend the rest of the weekend putting it together don't like that can't do that like me then they'll be glad to send somebody out to put it together for you they can do it they yeah. can uh, put your foundation in and set your bolts and put the building on top of it and you cut, wake up from your nap, and there it is. Absolutely. Buildings and the roofs all have the standing seam, which is kind of a lap-over type of thing. The if one interlocks in the other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you don't see all the screws and nuts and bolts and stuff. There you go. Yeah. Great folks doing a great job. 888-485-5372. Quality outdoor products. We've got a couple of minutes before we go to a break. And uh, if, uh, if you're watching on uh, either uh, y'all.com or uh, on the stream at 101.5.com, uh, you've been made, noticing I'm making some gyrations here. And the reason I am is because one of our text lines has gone bye-bye. 
the stream flooded it. It flooded. It started raining out here, and the mm-hmm. stream went went with it. Anyway, so for for the rest of the show, unless I can make some magic happen in here, four one zero seven five six zero is the text line that is uh, up and running. The other one uh, I'm working on. So four two uh, uh, four. Hello, four one zero seven five six zero seven three one is your text line number for the morning. 423-8101 or 1-800-304-1015 on the telephone. We need to talk to you this morning. There you go. We're going to have to take a break this morning or not? Yeah, we got one coming up here in a couple of minutes. I bet I could squeeze one in right now. Well, not necessarily. That just kind of messes the mood <laughs> up, but I didn't know what was going on over there. Well, let's, I tell you what, let's, ta- let's take this first break, and then uh, we'll come back and see, uh, see what else we can get into. Well, we're going to fix a brick when I get back. Fix a brick. Yeah. I've been known to tear one up from occasion. Well, we're going to show you how to fix it because right. it's nothing like having one turned on you and you falling out on your fanny in the yard. Ain't that the truth. And then you can't fix it, especially on a day like this when you got to carry your groceries upstairs. There you go. All right. We're going to learn about brick fixing right now. We'll be right back. We're going to be making the most classic bourbon cocktail known to man, the mint julep. Became the official cocktail of the Kentucky Derby in 1938. This cocktail is the Gold Rush. Today we'll be using bourbon instead. Today we're gonna make an old fashioned cocktail. One of the most classic bourbon cocktails there are. And it tastes good for breakfast. With the Kentucky meal, we are going to swap out that vodka for Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Called the Boulevardier, and we beef up the bourbon because it's Kentucky, and that's what we do here. Now to do a modern twist. Sometimes it's hard to do a variation on a classic cocktail because a lot of them are so good. An obvious place to go from there for a variation is a bourbon shake. So now we're gonna take that Kentucky sour and put a very fun, modern edge on it. But if you are the adventurous type, it is a delicious drink. And that is what I call a bittersweet bourbon sour. Cheers. Talked to my doctor and he said he would highly recommend that I go ahead and get a shot. It doesn't only help me, it helps my family around me and all the people I associate with. So you're not only helping yourself, you're helping your neighbors also. Well, you know, I might have been a little bit hesitant to begin with, but after uh, looking at all the statistics and I don't see any uh, anything after you take the shot, everybody seems to get along with it pretty good. So you have a spot, take your shot. This is Arkansas, and so is this, and this. It's a place where your adventures can lead to wonders thousands of feet below ground, or to views high above it all. Arkansas is full of things you've never seen, and things worth seeing again and again. So if you're looking for a place to create legendary stories, or just make lasting moments, it's all right here. This is Arkansas. This is the natural state. We are lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Join the movement. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities. Change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. Give back. Let's unite the world for good. We are lions. You can be too. Visit weserve.org.
run the sugar plum off of that's it. That's right. I mean, you got to watch that stuff. It's kind of, kind of, kind of nasty out there right yeah, now. Yeah, we're getting some uh, some pretty heavy rain here downtown Jackson at uh, the farmers market area. So be careful as you come in and go. It's going to be that way pretty much off and on throughout the weekend, and maybe a break according to Eddie Holmes early in the afternoon, but still going to be kind of soggy and messy out there. Yeah, I wonder which uh, weather model would agree with us right now. I don't know whether that it's, it's raining. Uh, the wet model. Wet, wet model. <laughs> yes, one of those uh, one of those Gatlinburg rain gauges. You oh yeah, with the, with the tail out there. Yeah, and it says if it's if the rock is wet, it's raining. Yeah, yeah one of those. Yeah, that, yeah, that would do it. It's it's right every time. Yeah, every time. Yeah. Text line this morning seven three one four one zero seven five six zero, and uh, the phone numbers seven three one four two three eight one zero one one eight hundred three zero four. 1015. Check us out on y'all, no apostrophe please.com. I'm told later on this month we've got to dial 731 in front of every number we dial now. I've heard that. That's just wrong. It's supposed to be getting easier. Why is stuff not getting easier? I don't know. I wish I had my phone book back and my rotary <laughs> dial phone. <laughs> I've still got one rotary dial. Well, no, it's not a rotary. It's a push button, but it is a dial type phone. It's a Mickey Mouse phone. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't care if I had one that cranked on the wall. That's true. You know, if if you could even get out. Okay. The true story this morning. I got up early this morning and had a cup of coffee at the house. Right. And the secretary of the war department woke up and came in there and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm watching uh, Andy Griffith. Now, and I got asked this question, this true story, Jim. Yeah. They were talking on the phone. They had to call Sarah. You know how it is. Yeah. Call Sarah. Uh-huh. Says, hook me up with somebody. I think they were trying to call the freezer repair man and Mike Pilot, <laughs> Mount Pilot this morning. Just call the man. Call the man. <laughs> yeah. You've seen that one. I've huh? seen that one. <laughs> she looked over at me and she says, why do they do that? I said, do what? Call Sarah. <laughs> and I says, well, did you see any numbers on that phone he picked up? And um, she says, well, no. I says, well, that's how you called somebody. You'd pick up the phone. It would immediately go to the operator. And if you ever watched any Lily Tomlin routines way back then when you had one ringy dingy two ringy dingy you had a lady at a switchboard where she'd pull a cord out of one hole and stick it in another to connect you with what you wanted to be sarah was the telephone operator she said huh well is that all she did? I said, well, yeah, that's what her job was. That until news dropped on everybody in town. <laughs> that's right. And, and, and less, when the population grew, they had to get another one. And then when they didn't want to pay nobody anymore, they decided how to put a, a dialing mechanism on the phone, and they eliminated the operators. Exactly. Exactly. I lost her right there. <laughs> As you say, she was lost her in last year's Easter egg. Yep, yep. It's, it's, it's the, you got that deer in the headlights. That's looking. right. Yep. It, yep. It, and I realized right then I just had to turn that off and go back to watching Andy. <laughs> that was that one of the great comedic lines of all time was Lily Tomlin. When she would ringy dingy somebody, and her first thing when they would answer was, "Have I reached the party to whom I'm, I'm speaking?" That's yeah. exactly that right. Is, that is so good, man. Mm. Just uh, they don't do them like that anymore. They don't do no. them like that anymore. Hey, I was at a fine home the other day. Really well, nice. Thank you. Thank you. We kind of like it. Yeah, <laughs> nice home the other day, and about broke my neck. Uh-oh. I fell. I splattered all over the front. Uh-oh. Stairs. Workers' comp. Here we come. Oh man, hurt skin. Did you know? I got a bruise. Oh no. Right on my side where I fell over on the side. But anyway, what it was was it was a set of brick steps, mm-hmm. and I, I guess I just stood on the edge of the one of those brick just right, and that thing flipped up, come loose from those steps, and down I went. Had a box of tools with me, yep, and uh, I splattered all over that brick uh, stairway right there on the front porch of this mighty fine home out here. So when the lady came to the door and uh, 
saw me sprawled out there on the floor. <laughs> she says, are you okay? I said, no, I'm not. I said, right now i got to just sit here for a minute. She said, do, do, do I need to call an ambulance? <laughs> I said, no, I just need to sit here and get things back together. Yeah, yeah. yep. But uh, we had three loose brick that came up all at once. And uh, she says, what am I going to do about that? I said, I'll fix it before I leave. Otherwise, I can't leave. <laughs> That's <right>. So... <laughs> I went out the truck. Now, now y'all have experienced this. You, you get a brick loose on your step, mm-hmm. and you get a brick mason over there, and maybe he'll he'll tuck point you a little mortar around it and try to put it back to where it looks real pretty, and but it won't stick. Right. So we had to go out, and I, I got out my trusty F twenty six, which is a construction adhesive mm-hmm. out of the truck, and uh, after I. would that there was some snail residue on the bottom of this one and and some a couple of ants or two and you had to clean the brick off in other words yeah I didn't want to wet it because i wouldn't didn't want my f-26 not to it roll right off but i took it out there and, and rubbed it real good on an old towel i had in the truck and got my f-26 out and i squirted it all on the bottom of that brick and laid it right back in place and Got out my rubber mallet, the one I use when we're uh, pulverizing the meat at our annual stew at the church. Oh yeah, I know so it well. I'll, I'll try to wash it before we do it this year. <laughs> Thank you. But but I but I popped that mallet down to get everything exactly where it ought to be, and uh, it stuck real good. And uh, sometimes you got to repair those brick like that, and you can glue them down. And it does a whole lot better job than trying to stick it down with mortar because the mortar just won't grab sometimes. Why do we not do it that way to begin with? I've often wondered that. Well, in the beginning, you put everything together with your mortar. Yeah. And it sticks. And all things being considered, it ought to stay put. But what happens is water gets down when you get the slightest little crack in that uh, step. Water gets down in it. And this hot sun during the summer or the cold uh, in the winter uh, will f- either freeze that mortar and cause it to push out, or uh, you'll be able to, the steam, it'll just like a rock explodes when you throw it in the fire sometimes. Yeah. It pops them loose. Let's go to our phone lines this morning. All right, let's do just that. Good morning, caller. You're on with John Allen. Hey. Hey. That, that, that secretary of war, you said? Yeah. <laughs> you got I'm one, too, don't you? Uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, but I, I understand what you're talking about. Uh, if, t- tell her that the, that the telephone operator is the server that operates the system. She might understand. <sighs> oh, but then I won't understand. <laughs> 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 there you go. That's a good explanation. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. The, it's exactly right. Yeah, same. And I, I, I remember when they had those fi- kind of phones still here south of Brewston at Pond Branch. They had it. They had those kind of phones yeah. till yep. maybe yeah. the seventies, possibly the eighties. I don't remember exactly when it was. Yep, I can remember them out at uh, out at out at Beach Bluff here in, in in Madison County when I was a kid. Yeah, we had them uh, at my grandparents' house up in Huntington, right there beside Brewston. And uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and I remember we could call, uh, uh, in, in, we used to dial five numbers. In, here in Huntington, we could dial six, and then the last four numbers. That went away when computers started. That's, that's, that's right. right. You had to dial seven numbers. Now it's going to be nine, or whatever it is. Too many. many yeah. yeah you're, hey, besides, now. Nobody, nobody remembers a phone number anymore. We just hit a name on on the phone. That's true. Yeah, you're exactly right. Oh, you don't even have to do that now. You just tell some voice in there to dial it for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. So just tell her, tell her it's not the operator; it's the server that's taking yeah, care the of the operator. That. The operator was the server. All you right. Got it. All right. We'll try yeah. that when I get home. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, thanks for calling. Have a good day. Watch out for the rain out there. It's going to be a sloppy weekend, looks like. That's a good idea. If she's tech savvy. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Wrong war, huh? Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know. We. I don't know. 
<laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> One would get the impression that you don't know. <laughs> well, I just hope she's still asleep. Otherwise, I'll be in trouble when I get home. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to figure out servers and operators and whether it's raining or not. But we're going to take a commercial break to do that. And we'll be back with more of John Allen's Tricks of the Trade. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Allie. At age two, my parents knew that there was something different about me. They were told that my life would not be typical. But Autism Society of America was there to help through all of my journeys. Help make a difference and make a donation. Go to AutismSociety.org. Hey Tennessee, I'm Kix Brook. You know, I've been blessed to tour this nation from sea to shining sea. And every time that bus rolls back across the state line, I'm reminded how good we have it here in our home state. Whether you like to hunt, fish, or watch wildlife, we got our Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency to thank for it. But before you follow that red dirt road to your favorite fishing hole or hunting spot, there's one thing you need, a license. Just visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com and you can get your license in minutes. We're going to be making the most classic bourbon cocktail known to man, the mint julep. It became the official cocktail of the Kentucky Derby in 1938. This cocktail is the Gold Rush. Today we'll be using bourbon instead. Today we're going to make an old-fashioned cocktail, one of the most classic bourbon cocktails there are. And it tastes good for breakfast. With the Kentucky Mule, we are going to swap out that vodka for Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Called the Boulevardier, and we beef up the bourbon because it's Kentucky, and that's what we do here. Now to do a modern twist. Sometimes it's hard to do a variation on a classic cocktail because a lot of them are so good. An obvious place to go from there for a variation is a bourbon shake. So now we're going to take that Kentucky Sour and put a very fun, modern edge on it. But if you are the adventurous type, it is a delicious drink. And that is what I call a bittersweet bourbon sour. Cheers. I talked to my doctor and he said he would highly recommend that I go ahead and get a shot. It doesn't only help me, it helps my family around me and all the people I associate with. So you're not only helping yourself, you're helping your neighbors also. Well, you know, I might have been a little bit hesitant to begin with, but after uh, looking at all the statistics and I don't see any uh, anything after you take the shot, everybody seems to get along with it pretty good. So you have a spot, take your shot. We are lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Join the movement. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities. Change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. Give back. Let's unite the world for good. We are lions. You can be too. Visit weserve.org. Welcome back to Tricks of the Trade. I'm John Allen, and Jimmy Duke is over here with me, and uh, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. And uh, well, I guess we better talk about another one of our fine sponsors this morning, mm -hmm. and that would be West Ten Fence Company. Yes, indeed. We we both had a lot of experience with with those folks, and uh, every time I come home after after being out for a while, and maybe we've had a little wind come up or some bad weather come up, I always look to my double drive through gate. Because we had trouble with that since day one when they they didn't build it, but somebody built it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Every time the wind would blow, it would pop open. Mm-hmm. Nothing we did could keep it from popping open till now. Well, it that, don't do that anymore well, since they, they rebuilt my gate. It don't droop either. It don't droop either. No, no, no they got got some steel in there. They yeah, got they serious did. with it. They, they really did. It. He said, "You want this thing fixed?" And I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "I can do it," and he did. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, it, uh, it, everybody has little specialty problems out there, and that's one of the mm-hmm. things they do. If you have something a little unusual or that just might be a little bit outside the store, so to speak, you know, yeah. where you got to sit down and think about it, they can solve your problem. So uh, if you need a fence or no matter what kind it is or you need a special kind of gate or you need an operator or uh, – might even just need some barbed wire to keep your pony in or something. <laughs> I'm sure they can fix you up. Keep your Calaveras frog from jumping out. That's yeah, right. Absolutely. Yep. Free estimates, one-year warranty, competitive prices, good quality work. They clean up when they leave. You never know they've been there, except all of a sudden your fence works and it looks good. And they're not a Milky Way wrapper to be found. Yeah, I know. Isn't that awful? Yeah. They didn't invite me to have one, so I that's guess that's, right. they didn't want to make me mad. I, I guess. guess, I guess. West End Fence Company, 2158 Hollywood Drive here in the city, 668-5959. Or for the sales department, R Pennington one the number one, at yahoo.com. That'll get it done, and we appreciate them being with us every week here on uh, 101.5. You know, I, I remember when I used to buy uh, fence panels. Uh-huh. It was that stockade type fence. Oh, yeah. And when you'd pick it up out of your truck, it would twist and the boards would pop off because they had these little staples. Yeah. In it. Little not nails, it was staples. Staples, yeah. And not very big ones either. Oh, it was awful. Well, they don't use any of this stuff. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. That was just an awfulest fence I ever could think of. And I'm just. These people, they make it from scratch, so to speak. They They'll do, actually yeah. get a board out and cut it and put it up there and yep. fasten it the way it's supposed to and not have this pre-made stuff. True, true. They'll, they'll, you know, they they work with what's there if they can. If they got to replace something, they'll replace something. I told them, do what you got to do, and I got, uh, I'm got i very satisfied. Yeah, very good. Well, they can yeah. help you out, too. So call West 10 Fence Company. Take you back a little bit, Jim. All right. Um, I'm sure when you were growing up, or it was when I was growing up, everybody had a screen door. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just a wood frame door, had a screen on it, and you had a spring. Mm-hmm. And uh, that spring, after a while, it'd wear a groove in the side of the jam where the where the, the spring would, would go over the side of it. Yeah. But the thing of it is that, spring would slam the door shut keep flies out right and it also served as a gentle reminder when you uh wanted somebody to get out of the house real quick you said now you need to get out and don't let the screen door hit you in the rear that's right that means get out in a hurry well we kind of progressed i'm not sure this was a good thing but we (laughs) progressed and went to storm doors yeah and they're still pretty common right now, unless you have these so-called insulated doors, uh, which, yeah, the jury's still out on some of those, I think. But anyway, you went to a storm door. Now, a storm door did not have a spring on it. Right. It had what's called a hydraulic closer. That's correct. Sometimes they're up high, sometimes they're down low. And sometimes they're in the middle. Yeah. But if you, the only thing about a hydraulic closer, unlike a spring, if you open your door too far, you'd either bend the rod or you'd pull it right out of the jam with the screws and all would just mm-hmm. tear out and mess up a perfectly good door jam. Right. But nobody would tell you how to maintain those doors. Some of them, it like, seemed like it took 30 minutes for them close, and then some of them would pop you in the tail before you could get through the threshold. True. So what the maintenance of a hydraulic closure is something that's always baffled some people. Why it does what it does and why are some of them fast and some of them are slow? Well, there's a little piston inside there, and there's that arm that slides in and out. Mm-hmm. It. All of them are different speeds, but what a lot of people don't know is how to kind of take care of those and how to adjust them. So, you know, I tell people at least once a year, get you an oily rag 
or squirt a little WD-40 on a napkin, even if you have to, and yeah. keep just a little lube on that rod. Uh, open your door all the way open to where it exposes as much of the rod as you can, and just uh, just get a little oil on there. Don't use grease because grease will get all gummy from, from the sand and the dirt and all that stuff that yeah. accumulates in the air, but just kind of keep it to where that rod is nice and smooth and glossy. But what controls the speed of that door is a little known thing in the in the other end of that closer that people just kind of wonder what it is and they don't mess with it. And there's a screw there. And that screw determines how fast or how slow you want that door to open or close. But depending upon the age of that hydraulic closer, What's good for one may not be good for another. So you yeah. got to play with it a little bit. So if you get you a Phillips screwdriver, because that is a Phillips screw in the end of the, the closer, and if you'll start turning it a quarter turn at a time. Normally, if you loosen the screw or turn it to the left, it makes your door close uh, faster. Okay. And if you're tightening it up, it'll make it close slower. But you just can't go in there and start turning it because you never get it right. So quarter of a turn, open the door, let it close, and then turn it again if it needs to go a little more. You just kind of work it and kind of go by the feel of the door. Because right. there, there's no magic instruction that says, you know, turn it a certain way like a combination lock to get it to where it'll be like it should. So if you want to change or adjust, and you have to do that from time to time because those hydraulic closers will kind of wear a little bit, or they may start leaking, Yeah, and uh, you have to change them out. But you can adjust them, so don't be afraid to get your little screwdriver and adjust it. And uh, you, you sometimes have to do that depending upon the weather, too. When, when it gets real cold, especially if you got a little moisture in there, it'll slow that door down. Hmm. So, uh, but you can open it or close it and adjust the speed so that you'll be able to get in and out without that thing slapping you on the honey as you yeah. go in and out. Cool. So. You know, I, I think you, you said, you said one word that I, I think is, is the one word that, that people get hung up on when doing home repairs and little maintenance things like that. They're scared of it. I'm that way. I mean, especially when you get up to major plumbing and electrical you know, uh, but uh, something like that, it's it, it's it's a matter of knowing what to do. But that's a simple a simple thing to do. You know, a quarter. Well, of a, everybody can figure out a quarter of a turn. M most well, people most can. everybody. Most I can't. <laughs> I can do that, so I figure everybody can, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, but it is easy. Don't be intimidated by little home improvement stuff like that. Certainly, you don't have to call a handyman. Yeah. Uh, to do that, uh, just a little screwdriver and just a little patience and realize the, the function of it and what it's supposed to do and why it does it, then you can pretty well adjust most anything. And it's just like, you know, if your door starts sticking after you've adjusted it, very few people know what a turnbuckle is, and they yep. used to put those on your screen doors. You don't have oh, to yeah. do that so much on storm doors because they're pretty well right. played uh, messed up. What, what trips, trips people up right now on storm doors they will buy a door, and used to, when you bought a storm door, it was your typical mill-finished door that the panel in the middle slid up and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you bought it right hinge or left hinge, which is opposite of right hand or left hand. <laughs> that always blows my mind. <laughs> but, but, you know, you'd go to the you'd go to the store. And you would say, uh, I need a, a, a left hinge storm door. They might come back and say, well, I ain't got a left hinge. All I got is a right. And you got to order something. Well, mm -hmm. they got smart. And now when you go get a storm door, it's universal hinge, which means you can do it either way. It's just a matter of turning it upside down or right side up. And you can make it work both ways. But your little handle points up in the air when you do that. But the handle's <laughs> not on it. That's just it. You have to put the handle on later. Yeah, okay. Well, that, yeah. Yeah, and bore your own holes. Oh, well, now, nope, nope, yeah. nope, no, no, no. 
See, you, you done lapped over now. I've got to move the screwdriver out of the way and get to the phone number in my mm-hmm. toolbox, which is yours. Okay. <laughs> I understand. I understand. But anyway, it, it uh, you know, you, you have to be a little more gifted to put them up. <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. But, uh but you can, but when you, now you don't have to know the swing of the door or the hinge of the door or the hand of the door. And uh, you can put it up. It's just a matter of turning it the way you want it and then swapping the headpiece from the top to the bottom and do it like that. Yeah. What's the, the you mean the engineers came up with something that actually is, is makes sense? I actually think Bubba got involved with this one. <laughs> That's <'Cause> possible. <laughs> He said, hey, look at here. <laughs> why we why don't we do this? Hey, that's... y'all. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, because that's too much common sense to do that. It, it's not engineered enough. It just makes sense. That's true. That's true. Now, here, here's, a, here's a question, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in a way that's going to make sense to anybody except me, and I'm not real sure about it. Go ahead and get, get ready to get your storm door, okay? Yeah. Is a storm door a storm door is a storm door? Or are there varying degrees and or qualities of storm door? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can get uh, good, better, and best. Okay. And uh, don't get the cheap one because it'll, it droops. Okay. I mean, it just, it's flimsy. The, you door, can, the door unit itself. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of judge the quality of the door when I see one on display. I'll open it up in the display. Mm-hmm. And grab the edge of the door on the top side, and I'll wiggle it. Well, if it starts flopping like a mop at the bottom, uh-huh. I don't want that door. Yeah, I hear that. You know, you want one that's at least an inch and an eighth to inch and a quarter thick, not a three-quarter inch one. Right. And uh, then you'll need to pick out a color because they got all different kinds of colors now. Used to be you had a choice of mill finish or mill finish. <laughs> and if you didn't want a mill finish, you just went and got a mill finish yeah, because that right, was it. Right. Everything else was special. Right. And then they mm-hmm. came out with white ones and then black ones and brown ones. And you could, you got everything you could get except maybe a harvest gold or avocado green to match your stove in the kitchen. Yep. <laughs> but if you were good, you could, you could change that color. You could you're, take it down to the auto shop and he'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll paint it for you right there. Tape it off and, and paint it. Yeah. What about what about the glass in a in a storm door? Well, it's tempered uh, glass. All, I was going to ask: Are all of them tempered now? It's all tempered, okay. and then you can get a self storing one that will raise up and down. Yeah. Or you can get like a full view that the panels are solid. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I like those. And then you can get them with plain glass, or you can get beveled glass, mm-hmm. or etched glass, or stained glass. I mean, there's all. Different kinds and of things. Mine, mine has a screen panel that you can you can take the glass panel out, put the screen panel in, and it's really easy to do. It is, but they are kind of heavy. Yeah, they are. Yeah, the glass one in particular. Is yeah, heavy, and, but, and, uh, and Grandma may not be able to lift that panel out unassisted uh, like you and I maybe could. But, uh, you know, I've, I was, I've always been partial to the self-storing ones myself where they kind of raise up and down. But yeah. They're not as fancy as some of the do the newer ones where you see the they want you want to be able to see the beauty of your door of your, behind of your, it. Yeah, of your ten thousand dollar solid wood door. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they, they, and they got those. You know that. Yeah, these, I know these expensive doors now. Yeah, I've I've always liked the the old style doors with the what do they call the uh, side lights? Yeah, on either side door centered in the middle in a nice. Bevel glass or etched glass uh, side light. I always, always love the look of that. On the right kind of house, of course. Yeah, right. you'd put them up there so you could kind of peep around yeah. and see who's at your who door. <laughs> and what's the first thing you do? They put a curtain put or a, a curtain. blind on it. <laughs> That's right. Or, or put some uh, put some of that shading on there because it's there's too much sun coming in. Oh, yeah. uh, that's true. Yeah. You know, you know, some of these doors, and and they use these storm doors. Uh, to kind of help keep the heat in the house and also to yeah. repel the weather. You know, if you right. get a good door that's facing south, southwest, sometimes you need a, a storm door on it so it doesn't weather so bad. Uh, but you put a storm door on some of these metal doors they got out now, and you can't even touch the doors if the sun hits them in the afternoon. They get hot. I have that problem. My house faces west, yep. and uh, you, can, you, can, you can tell what time it is in the afternoon in the summertime by how many pops you hear from the front door expanding and contracting, right. yeah. And, and you, people don't think a metal door 
expands and contracts, and they're worse, a lot worse than wood doors. Yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. We've got to take our final commercial break. We're going to come back and talk about one of our other. Well, why don't we do that before we go to break? Stormy, I did we can uh, do economy that. siding and windows. Yeah. We do as long as this thing's working. That's right. You got a finger. <laughs> I got a finger. We I like it. Work. We're manually controlled. Oh, down yeah, here. man. Yeah. Yeah, Stormy, uh, we've got a stormy weekend coming up, but uh, storm doors is, is, is one of the things that he can take care of. Windows, I think he's probably known nowadays as much for his window installation as he is for the quality of, of work that he does on vinyl siding and, and the other products he sells. Yeah, and these, these windows that he puts in, I mean, I just sat back, I'm amazed sometimes. He, he went out to one of my projects the other day that had a bunch of the old fashioned metal windows you know mm-hmm. ones you used to sweat them windows yeah. yeah you know they were they were awful i mean you'd go to raise them up and they'd fall back, right back down yep he uh knocked those things out and had the entire house with the new window set in place in about three or four hours wow that was the, putting the windows in was the easy part what took the time was doing uh making sure that the metal was bent properly around the outside to, that made them totally maintenance free and he had a matching caulk that uh, tied the windows and the, the, the trim together to where it looked like it just grew there. It was right. all one piece. And wow. uh, he put those in. We had matching siding to go with it and uh, even matching gutters and matching shutters uh, that he put on the front. So it, it really looked right. And, and there we had originally an old masonite house that the masonite was all swollen up and rotten and puffed out and wouldn't hold paint. Right. And you had rotten overhangs and metal windows and just a maintenance nightmare. And got finished and he walked away from there. Everything was totally maintenance free. All the customer has to do is if it gets a little dirt on it, just wash it off. Nothing like it. And uh, Nothing then you like could it. do that and, and it, you know. People think, look at the expense of doing all of that, but they have no idea how much money they're really saving in maintenance cost, uh, heat and air cost, heat and air cost, because they put a little insulation behind the siding, and uh, it just it just looks better all the way around. That's right, gutters, gutter covers, patio covers, they can do it all in that one spot. Economy siding and windows. Call Stormy at four two two thirty eight twenty eight. Or economysighting.com. We're going to have to take some pictures. He's going to come to your house Monday. Yes. I hope he's listening. I'm reminding him. You be there Monday, Stormy. (laughs) I'll be looking for you. We're going to, we know where you live. That's right. Uh, We're going to take some pictures of that. Okay. And share them up here on y'all.com before and after. In other words, before we had leaves. Yes, right. Afterwards, we don't have any leaves in the gutter. This is true. We'll do that. This is true. Before we had. Hospital bills for falling off of ladders. <laughs> Afterwards, none. I hope. That's good. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll wrap this thing up on this Saturday morning with Tricks of the Trade. You're listening to John Allen on 101.5. H2, my parents knew that there was something different about me. They were told that my life would not be typical. But Autism Society of America was there to help through all of my journeys. Help make a difference and make a donation. Go to AutismSociety.org. Looking for an easy way to compare bids from contractors you can trust? Search BBB.org for the type of work you need, then request a quote. Just click Get Quotes. You'll soon receive estimates from BBB-accredited businesses, businesses which meet BBB standards of trust. 
peace of mind is just one search away. BBB. Start with trust. Hey, Tennessee, I'm Kix Brooks. You know, I've been blessed to tour this nation from sea to shining sea. And every time that bus rolls back across the state line, I'm reminded how good we have it here in our home state. Whether you like to hunt, fish, or watch wildlife, we got our Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency to thank for it. But before you follow that red dirt road to your favorite fishing hole or hunting spot, there's one thing you need, a license. Just visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com and you can get your license in minutes. Got about three minutes left. Didn't mean to cut you off. About three minutes left in the, in the proceedings today. You'll hear the music over there. So what? Uh, what else? What we got? Storm doors fixed today. We got uh, we got a brick fixed. We got you fixed from falling on a brick that wasn't fixed. That's right. We've done a lot of work today. Last thing we're going to do, and I'll make it quick. Yeah. Because there's still a bunch of these out here. Is sliding glass doors. Yes. That don't slide very good anymore. Some of them never did. Well, you know, but if you put them in right, now I say that, you know, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, if they were put in right, they would slide ever so gracefully across that little rail at the bottom. True. And then next thing you know, you'd hear this grinding noise. <laughs> and you'd look down and it's like metal on metal scratching on the track. People did not know that the hole in the side of that sliding door down at the bottom, about an inch up from the bottom, Mm -hmm. there's a set screw back in that thing, and you could tighten or loosen that thing and raise that door up and down to where it would slide across that track. That was something that just people did not realize. And we're going to talk a little more about that maybe next week Yeah. and, and bring them in about what happened to sliding glass doors and what they got in their place and why there's some good things about it and some bad things about it. But I got to shut up because I hear the music playing. Hey, no problem. We'll go a little retro with sliding glass doors and bring you up to the future and the present next week here on Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. See you next week. Yeah, stay right where you are. Jimmy Leach, the investigator, is coming up next. (laughs) 